Welcome to the recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. Today we've been learning how Quasar and Vue work. The goal or the issue here is to um, move the map configuration form from kind of this position that's uh, in line above the map where we were just getting things to work and letting people, letting the user override the map parameters. Wanted to move it into a more kind of natural or conventional location on the sidebar. This doesn't actually work yet, it's, it's just the code is there. The next step will be to share state between, uh, basically globally, we'll make a global state container as far as I can tell. Uh, it had some great uh, challenges and difficulty figuring out. Uh, basically, this uh, navigation drawer, this Quasar navigation drawer, only renders at the top level of the of a layout, and this um, everything else here is inside of a page, just a few layers nested. So I couldn't uh, render content inside of the inspector, like as a slot or something like that, which I was kind of thinking would be possible based on my experience with Django, but I did figure out how to do things the Quasar way, and let's take a look at how we do that now. So the first thing is, um, and this is actually just how Vue.js works as well, instead of using slots, we're using what are called router views. And there's, uh, at first there was a one default router view in our project, implicitly named default, I just made that um, explicit here. And that's what renders the main map page component, which has all the logic for rendering the map and creating these buffers and that's what we're kind of wanting to split out a little bit. Instead of having our, our selection and our input widget in this page component, component we want to move that out. Um, so I was able to create another router view, which is sort of like a slot. And you can have these named router views where you can render components. Uh, and all you have to do is in your route specify the components as a dictionary and give the name of the slot and import the components, the view components from their respective locations. In this case, we're using a Quasar concept called pages, which we might even just get rid of that whole notion at some point. And then a component, those in the project are in separate folders. And I guess it sort of makes sense uh, on some level, but it's a little bit of a learning curve, not only to learn the view concepts, but then the Quasar concepts on top of it. I think it'll be fine in the long run. So I defined this uh, components dictionary, imported the components. Uh, our map component, as we saw here, uh, hasn't really changed, but I did create a new food menu component, which is just essentially those, those selection options. And then uh, a few data parameters to kind of keep track of the state. We're binding that. The next session will be to take a look at how to bind these um, to a global state um, store. Uh, I forget what it is in view, the default. Uh, uh, in any case, we'll learn about that. And the, where the way this fits into the whole project, the software project, is that the designer will be working, or the design team will be working across these different uh, urban aspects and potentially we'll be defining parameters for food ac accessibility, transportation, network accessibility, and uh, convenience, health and well-being and safety and education. All those parameters will be defined uh, more or less on the map interactively. That's the, the goal here. And they'll be kind of stored in a global context object. And essentially that'll be persisted in the server. On the server, we have a, uh, a new um, component of our data model called project, and it represents a, a design project or an urban design um, analysis and potential intervention uh, to track towards a desired uh, state in the urban environment. For example, if you define that we would like 80% of the houses in Tampere, households in Tampere to be within three kilometers of a food source, convenience store, supermarket, or just regular market, uh, then you could see, oh, okay, this whole area here in Uloyarvi might have some issues. Now, granted, there are convenience stores and grocery stores in Uloyarvi. This is a lack of data, but 
the more the thing we're, I'm trying to illustrate here is that it's an interactive way of defining goals um, for any given urban environment or any design project, whether it's a city or a, um, a district or potentially a whole states and countries, and um, save those to the server and, and maybe solicit feedback or collaborate, uh, track those metrics over time as the data get updated, you can, you can track them. So they, that's our brief update. I'm trying to keep it relatively brief. Brief. Uh, this has mainly just been focusing on the user experience. And again, we'll be moving uh, these parameters into a global state where th the user will, instead of interacting with these widgets, they will be over here. Thank you very much for your time. This has been a Code Buddies Live Code Hangout. If you'd like to get involved with this project or similar projects, stop by codebuddies.org. Codebuddies is an open source project on GitHub. You can go by github.com slash codebuddies to get involved with the, the next generation of the Code Buddies community platform. Thanks a lot, and I hope you're doing well out there.